He cut out. And I think we're good. And we're going to go into it. And we're going to be here about the Stanley Cup, as that's what Skype does. Skype being fucking Skype decides to be an asshole with motherfucker. Uh, so, yes, uh, this one's not going to be more for children. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> any, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> well, if you're listening, <laughs> go, going going into the uh, going into the um, Stanley Cup. People already know that I pick and choose videos and just not give a fuck. I'm just not. Right. I don't. I don't. I mark all my stuff now for children anyway. But like some, I'll just go spitting chiclet style. On. But um. The no, anyway, we'll get we're going to get into the Stanley Cup and we're going to get into some of the uh, awards. So, first and foremost, I'll turn it over to uh, E Money here because he wanted to go into who he thought his con Smythe would be, and I'll bank off of him for all of this because that was his idea to include that and not just the Stanley Cup preview. Oh, cool. Yeah, I just think it's like just cooler to do it that way. Um, so at least for the Avalanche, uh, my con Smythe favorite as of right now, um, I guess. At the end of the day, it all kind of boils down to how it's it's pretty much between like McCarr and McKinnon. Like right now, I would pick McCarr, but if McKinnon goes off, then McKinnon would kind of take it from him. But right now, I would go with McCarr, um, averaging 27 minutes and five seconds. Is that a? Hold on, let me look. Yeah, it's like, it's basically 27 minutes of uh, ice time. Uh, 14 games played, five goals, 17 assists, 22 points, plus minus 11. I mean, McCarr has been pretty much doing everything, defending pretty well. Uh, defense, he, he's just been amazing this playoffs. Um, I feel like the X factor for them is uh, Kaji, or pretty much unsung hero, really. Before he got injured, he had six points. He had that hat trick. One of the Blues games, I forget which game it was. Something. Yeah, Kadri, yeah, he was very good in that. Obviously. Yeah, he's been he's been good, and and we. It's still completely up in the air. Um, I can't imagine him starting for game one, but. Uh, it doesn't call, sound like if from paying attention to all the like Roto or the TSN and all those different trackers to see how people are tracking. It sounds like he's at least going to be out for. Game one. It sounds like they're going to try to make him as on track as possible for game two, but that's like a key on the word try. So, yeah, but yeah. it's playoff. So if you can just freaking move and get out there, yeah, exactly. Like play in the area. We're still seeing stars and said, "I oh, know, I'm fine. I don't have a concussion situation anymore. I don't know what the hell you are." Yeah, on. they're not going to uh, like. So. <laughs> but I, I no, I get what you're saying. I would say it's Mac. And McCarr. My question to you would then be though, who is it if Tampa wins? Because typically the con Smythe is not good to the loser. Oh well, yeah, that's what I meant. I meant like if the Avs win the Stanley Cup, this goes completely ballistic, and McCarr kind of like dips a little bit. Then the con Smythe might switch to McKinnon because I feel like the voters weigh on it more as the rounds get deeper. But right now, I would give it to McCarr. Um, in terms of the Lightning, it's either going to be Kucherov or Vasilevsky. Um, I mean, Vasilevsky has been incredible. 17 games played, 928 save percentage, uh, 2.27 GAA. My only problem with Vasi is that he wasn't that that great in the Toronto series, and he started pretty slow in the Rangers series. So, like, to me, I would give it a Kucherov. Uh, 17 games played, 7 goals, 16 assists, and 23 points. I, I thought Kucherov has just been the more incredible player, more just just more consistently across the board. At playoff run, I mean, Vassie's been incredible, and he's going to end up being one of the best goalies of all time when it's all said and done. Um, but uh, right now, I would give it to Kucherov at least. But it's going to go to one of those two if Tampa yeah. wins. Yeah, I would say so. That one I see the other way just because I don't think Vassie was really bad to start the series against the Rangers. I thought the Lightning just were really bad. Where the first two games, of the, well, the first game of the series, I don't know what the fuck the Lightning were doing. Uh, the second yeah, game of the yeah. series, they played a little bit better. The first yeah. game, they took a nap and forgot what sport they were playing. Uh, <laughs> so, and then after that, they actually picked it up and became the Lightning. But realistically, the Lightning, I would say, won that series mostly because of Vazzy. Because it's not like they ever expedited their goal scoring. Because uh, Shesterkin held them just as well as Vazzy from what would it have been. Game yeah, four, things got a little tighter. Like so, like, yeah. so I think, like, it 
it, it was a series that just kind of became the Prince Igor, the, the Battle of the Russians, basically, like everybody was saying, the Prince Igor yeah. effect and the, the uh, yep. Andre yep. Vasilevsky effect. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I, for that reason, if he's the big reason and these are lower score and he keeps it low scoring and say Darcy's back and that's the best chance of the Avalanche keeping it low scoring. Right. Um, and, no offense and, to Francois, but that's well, just the way it is. So I think if that's the case, I would say I'm going to just lean Vazzy because it's all the buck kind of stops with the goaltender. Kucherov yeah. would have to continue to go off, right. which he did last series, but they, they have a complete team. So who says Stamkos can't pick it up or yeah. point or for God's sakes, point comes in and then we so don't like know if coming things. back. Yeah. So there's different things that could happen whenever that could happen to. Tomorrow, like, yeah, that could just be one of those things that right before the game, it's like, oh, Brandon points on the ice. It's like, yeah, oh, okay, we don't cool. know. Like, we so have, you just we have never no really idea if gonna play or not. With, uh, so that that's why that's a big thing as well. But I would say with the Avalanche, we're in lockstep with the, um, not the Leafs, with the Lightning. I would give it to Vazzy by a smidge, but, but it's by a smidge. So we're kind of still close. It's just right, right, uh, and and, and also too, don't forget, like. I think the unsung hero in the Lightning's run is uh, Palat. I mean, the Palat's been incredible. Yeah. He's had two game-winning goals, eight goals, eight assists, 16 points. I thought he had a monster series against the Rangers. He had a game-winning goal against them. Or I can't remember if he had two game-winning goals against them. I know he had at least one, and I thought he had, like, a big assist. Like, I forget what game it was, but, like, I just remembered, like, seeing Palat just having, like, big, big moments. I thought yeah, he, he's, he's been incredible. Good. He's always been one of those great um, behind the radar players that do stuff yeah. behind the stars. He compliments the stars really well. Where it's nice to see him have a postseason like this, where you're having like people like us and others talk about him as being one of the actual under the radar stars carrying for the team, yeah. not just yeah. him being the guy that's just there helping the stars. Because there's nothing wrong with that role being the great B plus player that really helps out the stars. No, there's not. The, but but it's also fun to be more than that sometimes, and in this yeah. postseason he has been more than that. So it's right. nice to get to see him uh, right. become that kind of like you like yeah, you he said, just step up. up. I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah yeah. I just I, I just think Eric Dubron is going to have that. So, yeah, I would say for the abs though, my because people know that watching channel how much I appreciate the defense as much as the offensive side of the game. I would say a guy that's done a lot for the abs because of their center core is the one thing, other than Nathan McKinnon, obviously, that you might be able to get on them a little bit about since they saw a lot of guys developing. I think Comfort's are vitally important. Yeah, but I think he's on, on the team. avalanche. And I think he's kind of been one of those unsung heroes because he's actually been more effective in the offensive zone than you're more accustomed to seeing him play in the offensive zone where he's more of a defensive juggernaut and then whatever he produces mm-hmm. offensively, fantastic. Right. So in the But he's been doing more stuff in the offensive zone throughout the progression end of the season since the Avalanche are one of the most fun teams to watch. Why wouldn't yeah, you they throw them on at night? And then uh, throughout the postseason as well. So he's been always one of my favorite players to follow just because he's great on the defensive end and he's a perfect role player for that style. And I would say he's kind of been their unsung hero because every role they answer to fill that fits perfectly with his uh, attributes, he's filled perfectly. You're not going to go out and ask him to score 25, but if you go out and ask him to stop a guy that does score 25, he's going to do that. So, like, the, he's been doing everything that he's supposed to. So, I would say for the – when we're going with the Young Sung Heroes, for the Avs, since you took one for Tampa Bay, I'll go with the Avs. I would have to go with Comfort. Right, right. I mean, I, I had a, an unsung hero for both teams. Uh, just one I picked out. I mean, it, it's it's really going to be interesting to see if Kadri and Point, like, come back. Because I even broke it down as to, like, who has the advantage between what. It's like, in terms of – the goalie, obviously, the Bolts have, like, the much better goalie in Vasilevsky. Like, the Avs have been kind of rotating between Kemper and Francois, and both of their playoff numbers right now aren't, like, that that great. Uh, Kemper's played 10 games. He has an 897 save percentage and a 2.65 GAA. And then Francois has played six games, um, 0.906 save percentage and a 2.86 GAA. Like, they, one of them, I, I'm guessing Kemper's going to be the starter. Uh, at least for I game. I think game. so, as long as yeah, he was, he, the backup. he was yeah. the backup for the final game, so I would assume he's healthy enough to be. The yeah, they were just kind of resting. I mean, really, the Avs haven't had two. I think the Lightning have had a harder run to the cup because they beat the Leafs in seven, which I think the Leafs have been their hardest opponent to beat so far because the Leafs had them down three, two and 
there was a few overtimes in between, if I remember that correctly. Um, I think game six and seven both went to OT for um, Lightning and Leafs. Yeah, I believe they did as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, and overtime after the first round. Um, and then obviously – the Blues have been the hardest one for the Avalanche because they have two wins against them, and the Avalanche the Avalanche swept the Predators with no goalie, and then they swept the Oilers with basically no goalie. Um, so yeah, I mean, one of their goalies just signed in Switzerland. Uh, Miko yeah. Koskinen just signed in Switzerland. I was going to say Sweden, but then I rethought it. I believe it was Switzerland, but he signed overseas after this as soon as the season ended. So <laughs> yeah, they didn't oh wow, it's goal sending. Let me see. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm sorry. Game seven of Lightning and Leafs didn't go to overtime. It was two to one Lightning. Game six went to overtime because I remember my boy texted me and was like, I bet you $10 the Lightning are going to lose. I'm like, you're betting on the Maple Leafs. I'll take that bet. And then, yep, I won that. So, yeah, game seven was close. That was that was just a hard-fought series in general. I, I still think overall round one's been the most entertaining. It seemed like a lot of the – series just ended in like crazy fashion um but uh i mean the rangers and laning had a pretty good uh conference finals uh, i mean the avalanche and oilers had like some fun games but the avalanche were just the better team the entire time and uh that game four six five yeah. was insane no even when they had it was because the oilers what they did all season their offense was able to uh be enough to yeah. get him over the hump, whether the goaltending was still not good enough. Well, Mike Smith's fine yeah. as a backup if he decides to not retire, but it seems like he's going to retire. So mm-hmm. if he does, congratulations for the solid career he had. Uh, Miko Koskinen, best of luck in Switzerland. Um, so, but when it comes to, uh, I think the Stanley Cup as a whole, I was somebody that picked the Rangers last. I thought the Rangers were rolling, especially when they started the series right then. So I think this is really tough because the Avs should be the most rested, but also not the most hockey necessarily ready since they also haven't played. The the playing time is much longer ago. So I think it's going to be interesting uh, to see what what happens coming in. I I wouldn't be surprised if game one, the Lightning come out really good in the first and the Avalanche come out flat because the Avalanche haven't played in a minute. But... For me, the fact that the Lightning just beat the Rangers by playing as good of defense as they played on top of Azaleski doing that, that's what you have to do against the Avalanche. And the Avalanche have a Darcy Kemper, who's one of my favorite goalies. I have a picture I took of him over here, but he's mm-hmm. not good when injured. I know that from watching him over time. If he's playing through something, he's probably going to suck. And that's just the unfortunate reality for the Avalanche, that they're probably going to have to win this Stanley Cup through more offense than defense and play a little bit uncharacteristic from their own style. Because, yes, they have a good defense that can shut down, but you're going to let in some shit goals probably mixed in if Kemper's playing through an injury because he he usually doesn't move as quickly. Just from watching him in the past when he's played through stuff with Arizona or whatever because he had to battle for them because they had no other option, at least when you're in um, Colorado, you have Pavel Francois, who's at least a good backup level goal yeah yeah so, so yeah they I, mean, all I would say if he's injured don't start him. if he's yeah. injured don't start him until he's 100 percent healthy because francois looked good enough because mm-hmm. kemper really is there's certain goalies that can battle through and play through injuries really well darcy in his career just like michael neuvirth just like linus olmark there's certain guys that seem like they can't so mm-hmm. i think he kind of fits into that category so don't play him if he's bad but because of the uncertainty of the goaltending with the Avalanche, I would have to lean Lightning coming into the Stanley Cup. Uh, so you, you seen the Lightning win the whole thing? I would have to lean towards them. Yeah, yeah I mean, I want them to win. I don't want to repeat. Right. Um, I mean, it's one of those things where it could go either way. I think the interesting part about this matchup, at least on paper, is that you have the back-to-back champs in the Lightning, and then you have the Avalanche, who like a lot of people felt like were the best team all year long, even though they didn't win the President's Trophy, but they weren't far from it. And um, like I was saying too, like on the flip side of things, like the Lightning have had the harder path to the finals, and that just kind of shows that maybe they're like a little bit more battle-tested. But at the same time too, the Avalanche haven't had to play as many games. So I, I did the math here and looked things up last night when I was taking some notes. 
So the last game the Avalanche played was June 6th. When they play on Wednesday, they'll have nine days rest. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, yeah, and then the Lightning's last game was June 11th. They'll have four days rest. I'm, my thing is that you got to think the Lightning are going are gonna to wear out at like some point with these – back-to-back cup runs and then trying to go for another one. That's what one. I thought, but now I don't think it at all. Yeah, but, now, but now, you have like, now you have like <laughs> – you had shorter off seasons because of COVID. It's – I don't no, know. No, I and, get it, but there's a – Yeah, it's like you think they would wear out. Yeah, like, there's it's a just certain like, point where you say that's not going to happen, and I think we've kind of reached that point, and that's why I feel like the Lightning are going to win because I thought they were going to wear out when they looked slow the first two games against the Rangers and then immediately yeah. played their game again. Yeah. And the Avalanche, I would say, are coming in with even though this is something to say when the Lightning are missing Braden Point, he's one of the best two-way players in hockey. But but then the Avalanche are missing Kadri. How deep they still are, they're missing Kadri, but they also have uncertainty in net. The the thing Tampa does, they're not missing a key player. And yeah, that's the biggest net. advantage. They're just missing a key player. So I would yeah. say that goes to uh, Tampa's huge advantage. That's why I feel like they're going to win too because uncertainty and uncertainty among health reasons the net is even worse. Uh, yeah. That's going to be a thing that might harm Colorado. Right. I mean, and that, and that that's very possible too. Like, I mean, obviously Tampa has the biggest advantage in goalie. Tampa has a bigger, like, has a pretty good advantage in coaching at least because Bednar hasn't won anything and Cooper's got two rings on his fingers. But I would, I would give the Avalanche the slight, like, very, very slim margin in forwards and defense. I would I would give them that by like a very 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 slim margin, um, and I also kind of think too, the Avs are one of those teams that like just got over the hump. Like they haven't passed the second round in a while, um, kind of like the Caps a couple of years ago when they finally got over the hump. Um, so I think the Avs. I don't know. I think that's part of the reason why I'm picking them to win, just because they just finally broke through. I mean they're they're going to be more 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 rested. Um, I don't know. It's it, it is a tough one to call. I'm gonna say Abs get it done in six, though. I I just think at some point Tampa's got to wear out, and I think the Abs are a little bit more of a physical team too. Yeah, I do think when it comes down to their defenses, especially because you don't have Samuel Gerard, there's another guy we have to throw into the missing category when it comes yeah. to the Avalanche. He was a twenty or more minute playing defenseman this year for them. Uh, so. I would say their defense is now – Cal McCarr, yes, he does weigh it up more, but you still have – And Devontae's. Uh, I would say their defenses are not that unbalanced because Mikel Sergis has not that much worse than Devontae's. He's just younger and not as developed as Devontae's yet. So yeah. there, there's that side of it. McDonough's better than anybody that's behind Devontae's on Colorado. So, like, I think, I think it balances out uh, kind of their – their defense in the end, and then uh, I'd say with Man- Manson on Colorado's been playing too. Oh yeah, yeah, but I don't think he's better than McDonough because McDonough's. I like McDonough's been one of the better defensive defensemen for a while. Josh Manson, kind yeah, of McDonough's are like a shot game. blocking machine. Yeah, like but Josh Manson just picked up his game again with the Avalanche after struggling yeah. his last end total of the Ducks years. But I, but I just, I just gave the slight advantage to the Abs because. They have the best defensive pair in McCarr and Taves. And I think McCarr overall is the best defenseman in hockey. I think he just took over Hedman. Um, but Hedman is obviously still very high up there. Like It's also, I don't think the best of my thing is the reason I don't think the Avs are going to win. I think this is what we see. But I don't think the best defenseman matters if your goaltending is that much of a question mark. Because yeah, I, I, you, I agree with that. Especially when they're almost equal. Like, if it's, like, different, it's by, like, that much. So it's not, like you're making that much of a difference. One's just quicker because they're not 32 and the other's 22. But, like, they're both still really good defensemen. I think the one thing that might hurt the Avalanche, too, is experience in the end. Yes, they have guys that have been there, done that, but they haven't got to the cup yet. And then they have all these young guys that have been chipping in throughout the rest of the rounds. Like, when Newhooks got put in, he stepped up in some moments. Um, not Timmons. Um, what's his name? Uh, not Connor Timmons, but... Um, the big defenseman. I don't know why I'm blanking on him now. You know who I'm talking about. For the they're Avalanche? Young. Yeah, they're young. Byron. Oh, Byron, yeah. He's been yeah. looking good, though. He, he's he been good, too. But, like, all these guys are young. So, 
they could also collapse at any moment just because of the pressure of, of the Stanley Cup. Where when it comes to, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I hope that doesn't happen, but we've seen it happen multiple times in the hockey. So when it comes to the teams that I think is the most ready for the cup, I wouldn't say that's Colorado either. I would say that's Tampa. Not oh, well, yeah, since they're more goalie. experienced. Yeah, but also based off of the fact that their goalie isn't a question mark. And one of their biggest players out is not two of them, first of all, because I would argue Gerard's at least a B-level player for Colorado, not a B-plus. So him being out and a guy that's, that's important in the offensive zone when they're going to need that more against Tampa to match their goals might be more crucial in this series than it was against previous series. So, I mean, I think it's going to be tight. I would have honestly, I think, if fully healthy and Darcy Kemper wasn't banged up and fully healthy and Colorado was wrong like they are, I think I would have picked Colorado because I really like Colorado and Steel knows that from the entirety of the season and the show we did with the JB oh, well, yeah. and Steel. Yeah. But yeah. I can't now because there's too much Gerard out. I like him more than most people. I think he's a better defenseman than people give him credit for. He's better in the offensive zone than the defensive zone, but he's not as ass as people say he is in the defensive zone. Uh, and then when it comes to the goaltending, Francois is going to have to step up big time if Darcy's not healthy, and Darcy's going to have to actually play well unhealthy, which he doesn't commonly do if they're going to be able to kind of get over the hump. And I think those are too big of questions for me going in to give them the favorite uh, as much as I want them to win because I don't feel like seeing a three-peat, but I would have to yeah, uh, lean towards Tampa. But I think um, we're kind of in the wrap-up points. I don't know if you had any closing three thoughts on the Stanley Cup or the playoffs as a whole. How many, how many games you give in the Lightning? I'll say six. Tampa and six. Yeah, because yeah, I don't think it's going to be like a five. I think it's going to be a series that goes at least six. So I'll say six. Yeah, yeah. I want to see a game seven double every time. That would be cool. Wouldn't it be cool? Yeah, that would be amazing. Be late as hell, but that would be cool for us. Yeah. yeah, it would be. I would just suck it up. Be like, all right, whatever. <laughs> I'll go to work exhausted for a day. Screw it. <laughs> oh. But, um, yeah, no, that's pretty much everything I have. I, um, I just kind of – Broke everything down. I'm super excited. We gotta wait two more days and then three more days after that. And then I think it's like every other day. So that'll that'll be nice. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, uh, for me, I've been busy lately, but the good busy, not the annoying busy. So it's been yeah fun doing different things to stay tuned for some of the different stuff we have coming out for now. Uh, stuff that I'm going to tell you um, is uh, Sports Fanatic News. Subscribe here. Subscribe at Steel Flyers. Subscribe at Flyers Nitty Gritty. We'll see how long we just started. All genre music Subscribe everywhere. Uh, as well that we have. And stay tuned for more stuff coming from the music side of things. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe and enjoy the hockey.